Willie Mack on the line right now, the Impact Wrestling X Division champion. How are you today? Uh, I'm fine as can be, chilling outside with the AC warm because it's 100 degrees outside. There you go. Always got to stay cold. So, everybody's stuck at home. There's no easy way to put it. It's a terrible, difficult situation, but... What are you doing to stay busy at home, kind of keep your mind at ease, and keep yourself occupied? Yeah, the same thing everybody else at my age would do. Play video games and yell at people online. <laughs> wow, what do you... Yeah, probably yell at your cats when they're not doing what you tell them to do, like this cat right now. Yeah. What, uh, what games are you playing right now? Uh, that new Doom game. The new Predator hunting ground game. Overwatch, of course, is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Fortnite, when I want to get pissed off. That's about it. <laughs> You've been the uh, X Division champion for 28 days and counting now. What was it? I have. Or, well, I'm sorry. Well, well, by the time that it aired, it's a little less. But <laughs> when it was taped... It was about that long, but you know what? What was it like winning the title without a crowd? Like that's got to be, it's got to be something to, you know, you usually have like a big pop at the end. But how do you process that as a wrestler, like with with a big moment like that in your career? Yeah, it's kind of tough, but you know, it's a television, so the people at home will probably give you the energy. But at that moment, you're going through the match, your adrenaline is on, and you usually hear, like, the crowd. But I didn't hear that crowd. Like, when I hit that last big move, it kind of took me out, but took me right back in. Be like, you know what? I'm a champion anyway, so that's all that needs to be accomplished. I won my match and did what I came here to do. You said in the past that you grew up as a fan of the early X Division in TNA. Is there maybe anybody that you model your style after or maybe take cues from as far as just being an innovator in the division or as a champion? Not really, because every wrestler, you try to go out there to be compared to yourself because a lot of people be like, oh, you remind me of a junkyard dog and this and that. But you look at Junkyard Dog, it's like, I didn't do anything like him. The only thing I have in common with him is having a beard. Because mm. I try to create my own style, and I guess that was a good enough style to fit in the X Division. Option C has always been a staple of that division, too. Is that something you can see yourself doing in the future? I don't know, man. I just got the X Division title, and I like having the title. But plus, it's like you have to give it up in order to get a shot at the world title. But that might always backfire, and you end up titleless at the end, which was suck. <laughs> but hey, who knows? I wanted to go back to the situation at the tapings where not only you don't have fans, but Tommy Dreamer said, you know, it was going to be very quick, you know, a lot going on in a short amount of time. Did you have to make any major adjustments, whether it was preparations before a match or during your in-ring routine? No, not really. It's still the same to me. It ran smoothly and it was all good. It was just no fans part that trips us out, but besides that, everything was still the same. Now, you've always been known for having a unique athletic style, and it's served you well in your career. Do you think maybe on a more positive note that you know there's maybe some new moves you can look to add to your resume, something that might... As you mentioned earlier, like maybe the maybe the crowd at home, the, the TV viewers and the people watching on Twitch might pop over where, you know, it might not work for a live crowd, but it might resonate differently with people at home. Uh, I'll do moves, new moves every match. That's the thing. People will see like my signature stuff, but then they don't notice like the little things like, oh, you would done that, that, and that. So every match I try to do something 
a little bit different in there, but keep the same stuff in there, like your signatures. Is there something that you have added, like maybe a little detail that, you know, you want people to pick up on that maybe they haven't yet? Eh, I guess when I do my rip tire in the corner, that'll be awesome. Like, you know, the corner cannonball thing you do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's called the rip tire. I got that from my Overwatch video game. Because it's a character on there named Junk Threat. And when you build up this special ability, he basically pulls out a tire filled with bombs. And then we got a motor on it so he can remote control it and make it blow up on anything it touches. You were the Impact Wrestling one to watch in 2020 winner. It already seems like it's paying off. But you also have Chris Bay, who's coming in with a lot of hype, social media attention. And, you know, you, you've wrestled with him before, just recently. And then before that, you wrestled a couple times at bar wrestling. Do you, What do you see in him as an opponent, you know, and kind of being a thorn in your side in the X Division? It, it seems like... You're gonna to have to face him quite a bit in the in the near future. And, you know, I it's just like the internet makes people do crazy things. Like when people get hyped up over something, it's just like when fidget spinners came out, people was all crazy about them right then. But you hear anybody talking about them now or playing with them? No, they're in. <laughs> not really. Exactly. So it's like if you take slow steps and build it up, it'll be good, but now it's like everything's being rushed and overhyping yourself. That gets you, like, shut down real quick. So, then my dealings with them in the past was all right. Now it's like, all right, I got to shut this kid down a little bit. Are you going to give Johnny Swinger a title shot? One thing that I feel like has maybe not been making a comeback, but it seems like with the situation we're in right now, cinematic wrestling is taking a focus where if you look back at history, it was Impact had the the deletion matches and the Dark Realm. WWE did the Boneyard match, and then even last night, AEW did like the stuff with the golf cart, where it really it caught on, and it makes a lot of sense to do now. Do you look at yourself maybe more of an asset to impact because of your history in Lucha Underground? Like, you have that experience working that style, like that cinematic style yourself. Uh, yeah, everybody going crazy over it now, but it's like, we already did that like a few years ago, and people was going, ah, it's crap or whatever, but now look what's the hip thing to do. You know what I mean? It's weird. <laughs> mm. I mean, do you, do you feel like uh, it maybe ran its course where you're not excited about it yourself because you already worked it, or do you just feel like it, it's a case by case situation. Like, if there's a match that deserves it, that it should be presented that way. Uh, I guess so, but it's like, if somebody else already did it, it's like, oh, let's try to do it now. But she was just talking crap about it earlier. Like, you know what I mean? Like, from a fan's perspective. Mm hmm. Like, some of them didn't like it, but then now, if somebody else does, they're like, oh, that was cool, this and that. Be like, all right. But being in that background where I came from doing it, it's cool, but only if it's done right. Like, for certain things, you can't do it all the time, and it'll lose its mystique, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you do have quite a bit of TV experience in different genres, different styles of wrestling. Lucha Underground and Impact are two of them. You worked with NWA a little bit. And you you left before Power really started broadcasting on YouTube. Do you feel like there was anything that maybe 
fans didn't get a chance to see because it was restricted to pay-per-view and, you know, the live events like the Crockett Cup where, you know, you really want to show people that maybe are maybe are just becoming Impact fans now but know you based on name alone. Like, is there anything you really want to show people about what kind of wrestler you are or what you bring to Impact Wrestling? Just show that I ain't got to change myself for nobody, really, because a lot of places you go to, they'll try to make you, oh, you should be this, you should do that, you should talk like this, you should walk like that. Hell no, you look at every place I've been to, I've been me. And that's all you got to do, just like, go out there and show them why people like me. For some reason, they like me, it's just for my wrestling skill and stuff like that. They don't care if I'm fat, really, or not that tall, just my wrestling. Is there anything that you can talk about uh, coming up with the next set of episodes of Impact that you were, you know, you were just a part of the tapings? Are you looking forward to anything in particular, whether it's, you know, a match that you had, another, like, are you kind of like looking at another title defense in the future, or what can you kind of like talk about where you can hype fans? You have a new challenge. I should be excited about everything because besides my match and stuff that I do, I don't really get a chance to pay attention to the shows, but... When it comes on TV, I'm always there. Like, as soon as it comes on on Twitch or Access, because it's new to me, because I only know my stuff. But there's a lot of good things to come in the next few weeks. So everybody tune in, like you always do. And there, there is a lot of really good stuff coming up. There's a number one contender's title tournament. The uh, Moose situation with... he's claiming he's the real world champion which I mean I'll be honest I think with Tessa not being there I think this is a really unique situation how to keep a champion like keep you know your world champion on TV even though he kind of he didn't beat anybody for it well he did win his match at Rebellion so even though he didn't beat nobody for it he did win the match so I guess that kind of brought it out of retirement, I guess, because it was retired, right? A retired title. And now it's active again, which is something amazing, because you think about all the people that had that title, like Drew and Bobby Lashley and Del Rio and everybody else, and AJ, Joe, Sting, you'd be like, damn, that's a historic title. Mm. And I'm glad to see it back on television and have a chance, maybe, to go after it, because that's history right there. He's holding, even though he took it out of the warehouse. But, yeah, it's still something to go after. <laughs> I'll get you out on this. I've been doing a feature called The Watch List where I ask different people that I've talked to about, you know, your favorite matches, whether it's from your career, one that you saw recently from another wrestler. Fans were really worried that they wouldn't have new wrestling content to watch during this pandemic. So I asked you, are there any matches that you would really like to recommend to people, whether they're watching for the first time or whether they're just having a new appreciation for it? Yeah, yeah just watch so many. It's hard to pick one. Uh, uh, I guess the sacrifice match AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, and Chris Daniels for the X Division Championship on the Impact Plus app. Okay. Another one I'll point out, it's your match with Rob Van Dam at PCW's Phantasm show. Oh, okay. Is that somebody that, you know, you would like to work with again in Impact? That, because I, I point yeah. to that match, you know, it, it's a really, really good match that kind of, I think it was three years ago now, and it really, like, kind of put my eye on you as, you know, somebody to watch. Well, yeah, I like to get my rematch back, because he beat me there, and it's like, I can't keep letting RVD put his hands on me and get, thank you, go get away scot-free. Mm-hmm. 
So. And plus my frog splash is better. <laughs> I'm sure that won't sit well. But yeah, there there's a bunch of stuff that you know you can get on Impact Plus. I'm looking on the uh, Impact YouTube channel. They just added uh, Kurt Angle versus Rockstar Spud, which I believe was uh, an option C match. He cashed in the X Division title, and like you pointed out, Spud was unsuccessful. He did, and he lost his X Division title and went home with nothing. So I, I think you do have a point. It's it's not always gonna be a success. How can people follow you online? Like, how can they see what you're up to? You want to drop, like, your social media tags or your gamer tags? Oh, yeah, that's easy. My Twitter and Instagram is the same as Willie underscore Mac. And then you can like me on my Facebook page. It's official Willie Mac. Go give it a thumbs up. And then PlayStation is Willie underscore Mac 1. On the PlayStation Network, I don't remember my Switch ID because Switch ID is too long. It's like I'm reading a barcode. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's about it. And just keep in tuning in on Tuesday nights on Access or Twitch for Impact Wrestling. All right. There you have it. X Division Champion, Willie Mack, thank you very much for your time. Hell yeah, thanks for having me on.